Hi, everyone. My name is Sharad Vikram. I work on the JAX team at Google, and I'm here to talk about Palace. Uh, Palace is a JAX kernel language. Essentially, it's a way to enable JAX users to write custom kernels for uh, hardware accelerators, and it largely is based on Triton. So a uh, quick overview of Triton. Triton is a library for writing custom kernels on hardware accelerators. Uh, it presents a Python front end, uh, aka the Triton language, that allows users to write um, kernels uh, using some simple Triton bindings. And eventually, uh, those will generate an MLAR representation that is then finally compiled down to uh, platform, platform specific assembly like PTX on NVIDIA GPUs. Um, and Triton does a lot of really cool things, uh, but I want to draw a distinction between uh, what I consider the like Triton language, um, aka this DSL part, and then the MLIR-based compiler that consumes uh, MLIR and eventually produces uh, the PTX. And I'll be focusing more so on the DSL part, the Triton language, uh, mainly because uh, I want to talk about how Triton uh, is a really great tool for ML researchers. Um, I myself have an ML research background. I don't have a formal systems or compilers background, and I'm not super comfortable with writing C++, uh, or, and I'm not also that familiar with um, GPU performance. So Triton offers me a way, at least, of writing really efficient uh, GPU kernels without having to uh, dedicate a lot of time to learn about all the details of, um, of having to do that. and being a familiar Python library that I, where I don't have to learn a brand new language to write it either. Um, and I think this is why it really greatly appeals to machine learning researchers, because it allows them to confidently write uh, their kernels without leaving too much performance on the table. So this talk will focus on Triton as a tool for researchers. It's, um, it's, it's great for researchers because, as I mentioned, it's in Python. so. Uh, uh, researchers don't learn a brand new language necessarily, and Python is really popular in ML. Um, it's expressive in that it allows you to write uh, computations that are hard or ineff inefficient to express using current ML frameworks. Um, for example, writing a block sparse uh, matrix multiply in JAX today would be pretty inefficient because HLO is not uh, exposing uh, that uh, low level of control over your GPUs. It is familiar in, in a really important way in that it gives you a vector slash array programming language, except you're writing it at a lower level. And it's fast, which means that once you uh, write your kernel, you can be confident that it will uh, it will be fast. Uh, and this is really important for, for modern ML research, where we're often looking for the best way to utilize the hardware accelerators we have and ideas that don't appear to work fast on hardware accelerators can be left by the wayside. Um, so where does JAX come in and how does how do JAX and Triton play well together? And why would we want a JAX Triton integration? So JAX historically has seen a lot of success because of its NumPy API it gives to users. Um, NumPy is, has long had a foothold in the Python ML ecosystem. So JAX presenting the same interface a lot of users are accustomed to has been uh, really nice. And the fact that it works on many different types of accelerators without users having to rewrite their code is also a great benefit. And we largely do this through XLA, which is a fantastic compiler that can take HLO and compile it into efficient uh, code for accelerators and CPUs. Um, and the reason why Triton might has, has an interesting part to play in this is uh, we're in an interesting time where uh, we see a lot of new advances in systems. And sometimes the compiler, it's harder to keep the compiler up to date with those latest and greatest trends we see. Uh, flash attention is one that comes to mind where it was a, a paper that came out that really revolutionized how well we do attention on GPUs. But compilers may still take a while to catch up to these advances. So we do want some sort of stopgap that allows uh, expressing new ideas without having to uh, change uh, a, a compiler to do so. Another reason which I alluded to was that HLO is not always the best representation for um, all sorts of computations that the user might want to do, yet 
they might want to express something that is fast on GPUs, for example, block sparsity. Triton does offer that much more control over uh, how you're using the GPUs and um, could enable you to write new sorts of computations you couldn't express efficiently before. So the overall solution that we're thinking in JAX is to offer an escape hatch where the user can opt into uh, Triton code, uh, tri Triton kernels when they need them, but can rely on XLA for basically everything else. We want this uh, escape hatch to be both uh, expressive, as in it does offer you more control than you did before, but not so hard to use that it's uh, it's, it's really difficult or it's a really steep learning curve that will um, lead researchers to shy away or give up on what they wanted to implement. So the two main integration points we have for Jax and Triton are what we call Triton Call and Palace Call. Triton Call is essentially a very uh, lightweight integration, um, similar to how uh, Triton integrates with PyTorch. Um, it basically allows a way of launching Triton kernels from inside a larger Jax program. And this is the escape hatch I talked about. You might write your Jax program use your uh, regular old Jax NumPy ops, but then at some point you may want to optimize part of it and, and there you'd sub out some of your code for a Triton call. Uh, Palace call on the other hand is a lot more tight of an integration rather than uh, users um, writing their kernels in the Triton DSL, they'll write them in Jax directly. And this is a little bit uh, confusing because um, it blurs the boundary between what's an escape hatch and what's actual uh, JAX, but uh, we think that this is a really um, powerful way of uh, writing um, writing kernels because of this tight integration with JAX. It adds a lot, uh, a, a few more capabilities than what you could do with the Triton DSL. So Triton call is again, this lightweight integration. Uh, the user writes their Triton kernel. You can see that up there on the top right, uses the exact same APIs they'd normally use, but when they call them, uh, they use this Triton call function, which takes in the kernel um, and the set of arrays, uh, JAX arrays, and then we'll return a JAX array. And underneath the hood, we will take the user's Triton kernel and um, run the Triton compiler to turn it into PTX, and then launch it inside of an XLA custom call. So it really is part of a bigger XLA uh, program, and we're embedding one of the function calls in that XLA program as uh, to be a like a custom kernel, some custom PTX that is generated by Triton. It's fairly very lightweight integration, but you can see the same things that you'd see in the PyTorch integration, where there's a grid um, that the user specifies that parallelizes the execution, uh, and of course there's uh, like metadata like the block sizes for the kernels, um, and this will allow. Uh, users to integrate existing Triton kernels they might have written with JAX. And yeah, we think this is like a really simple integration that does a lot for us. Um, for example, you can now use the flash attention implementation in Triton uh, in JAX now. Um, Palace Call, on the other hand, uh, enables users to write the kernels in a different language entirely. You can see on the left is the add kernel, very simple, that uh, adds two vectors together. Um, on the right, we have an ad kernel written in Palace. And unlike the ad, ad kernel on the left, uh, uh, the Palace ad kernel takes in refs instead of pointers. And instead of doing pointer arithmetic to figure out how you're going to be uh, loading in values from uh, HBM into shared memory, we do regular NumPy style indexing. And this is a level of um, abstraction we think is a bit more familiar to uh, ML researchers and existing JAX users because they don't need to think about how uh, arrays are laid out in memory. They can um, instead think about uh, array indexing, which is something that they're already familiar with from NumPy. And uh, the details of how arrays are laid out are, is handled by uh, JAX itself. These ref objects are basically wrappers around pointers, shapes, and layouts. And as a result, we can translate any indexing the user does into the appropriate Triton pointer arithmetic. Another thing to notice is that this is a departure from how we usually write JAX programs in that there is a mutation in it. Um, normally in JAX, uh, all the programs we write are pure, um, and this allows us to stage out our programs uh, to, for compilers a lot more easily and transform them using AD, uh, for example. Um, this is a departure where we're allowing uh, a specific type of mutation where refs are basically mutable arrays. And we, this is a really important feature for kernels because of 
um, the importance of reading and writing from memory. Uh, it's often something we do inside of kernels. So we had to augment the JAX representation of, of programs to allow this sort of mutation. So what exactly is happening underneath the hood when you write this kernel? Well, we'll uh, first, first write it using JAX and using these refs and NumPy indexing. Uh, you then, uh, we'll then trace it into a Jaxper. Jaxpers are Jax's internal representation that it uses for uh, vmapping, for AD, et cetera. And eventually it will take this representation and lower it to Triton IR. And this is what's uh, eventually compiled down to PTX by the Triton compiler. Um, so there's just an additional step where we turn the user written uh, Jax code into Jaxper and then that Jaxper is turned into um, the Triton IR. And uh, yeah, I can enumerate a set of interesting advantages that we see in the palace uh, representation over the, the Triton uh, DSL. Uh, the first is that um, we think that the NumPy style indexing is uh, a bit more uh, familiar to existing users. Uh, they don't need to think about pointer arithmetic, and they can use things like uh, JNP.A range, for example, um, using existing JAX NumPy functions is nice because users don't have to learn uh, a brand new uh, library. Though I will note that there is a downside. Um, Triton pointers do allow you to do some clever indexing uh, in, um, and I guess it's, it is a lower level representation. It does give that a little bit more control over this uh, slightly higher palace representation. Um, one thing we think that's nice about the indexing, however, is that it's a little bit less error prone, and um, uh, at least it, we found it easier to write uh, um, complicated sort of indexing using the palace representation. Uh, another point to note is that uh, we're using JAX tracing machinery to stage user written kernels into JAXpers, and we can rely on the existing very mature JAX tracing machinery to do this. And this means we automatically get support for higher order functions and closed over values and all sorts of crazy things you can do in Python. Uh, and I think this is a lot easier for us to do just because we're using a tracing based method, um, whereas this is a bit harder to do with an AST based method. And this is not really saying too much other than um, uh, JAX is just a nice way to stage out uh, user written programs. Um, and Palace is uh, just uh, latching onto that. Um, at the end of the day, you write your palace kernel and you execute it in a similar way you'd write, uh, you'd execute a Triton kernel um, with a palace call function. You embed this in a larger JAX program. You specify grid like you did before and whatever metadata, like block size, and you call it with um, JAX arrays and you get back JAX arrays. So it's not too big of a departure from how you execute Triton kernels in JAX already. Uh, one really cool feature of palace call that would be hard to implement in an integration with Triton call um, is interpreted mode. Um, normally, when you uh, write a palace call, you we, we take the Jaxper that uh, that that the uh, the user has written the, the kernel, we turn it into a Jaxper, and we turn that Jaxper eventually into uh, Triton IR. But instead of turning it into Triton IR, we can actually turn it into an HLO into HLO directly. Uh, we do this by emulating the execution of that kernel uh, using a while loop instead of uh, you know, mapping it across many SMs in a GPU. Uh, so that while loop allows us to, uh, because we're writing, expressing this kernel using HLO, we can actually use the existing JAX debugging machinery to introspect values inside of the kernel, for example, or even execute or emulate executing the, the kernel on a different platform like CPU. I think that this has been this is, when I've written kernels. This has been a really helpful tool for debugging, uh, being able to like print values inside the kernel really easily, and um, and do the other sort of introspection that Jax allows. Um, and we think that's a just a very nice tool for Jax users in general who may not even have you don't even have to write your kernel on the accelerator. Uh, you can write it on CPU and then try it out on the accelerator afterwards. Another uh, abstraction we've added is block specs. We noticed that in a lot of uh, Triton kernels, there's a common indexing pattern. Um, for example, in um, in a uh, in a matrix multiply, uh, we often see that the user uh, will 
block, uh, take like each instance of your Triton kernel will read out certain blocks of the inputs and write to certain blocks of the outputs. Um, and there is a structure to it. And we allow the users to express that sort of structure using uh, block specs and we'll save some indexing boilerplate as we'll soon see. First, the user identifies for each of the inputs and outputs of the kernel what the shapes of the blocks they want to carve that into. Uh, then they also identify a function that maps which instance of the kernel they're in, aka the program ID, um, to which block uh, should be selected for that instance of the kernel. We'll walk through a quick uh, MatMol example here. Um, so in this MatMol example, uh, we have two inputs and an output. Um, we specify that uh, if we want to carve up MatMol into certain blocks, block shapes, we will specify those in the uh, block specs for the inputs and the outputs. And you can see that we're carving up the X into row blocks, the Y into column blocks, and the and the Z into uh, smaller uh, like rectangular blocks. Um, and we roughly know that uh, computing the Z for a particular program instance involves just dotting the X and the Y for that instance. Um, we also specify an index map function that tells us for a particular program ID, say we're in program one comma two, it tells us which blocks we'll be selecting for that program. And uh, inside the kernel, we can see that uh, we are we don't have to do any indexing anymore, really. We're just taking out, we're just reading those blocks uh, into shared memory directly. And this is some indexing that Palace is doing on behalf of the user based on these block specs. So we save the user a little bit of uh, indexing boilerplate that they would normally have. Um, and another uh, feature that is enabled by this tighter integration with JAX is uh, JAX transformation support. Uh, the user can write, say, a MatMol kernel, and uh, maybe they want to turn it into a batched MatMol kernel. Uh, and normally in JAX, we do that via JAX.vmap, which will take a JAX program and add a batch dimension to it, basically. Um, but uh, because we have control over the uh, representation of how the user's kernels are, we can just add an additional grid dimension to the kernel on behalf of the user and automatically vmap it for them. Uh, similarly, we can take kernels that the user has written, and in principle, we can auto-differentiate them as well. The JAX AD machinery works perfectly well on palace kernels. Um, so it'll essentially take a kernel the user's written and split it up, automatically generate a forward and backwards pass kernel. However, this is still a pretty experimental feature and isn't always recommended because while you will get correct uh, forward and backward kernels, the backwards pass may not be as efficient as you'd want it to be. Um, and this is an ongoing area of research and investigation for us. And as a conclusion, um, just wanted to highlight that we have Triton call in JAX, which is the main way you can call Triton kernels directly. But we also have Palace, which is a tighter integration where uh, it enables um, using JAX functions directly. It has NumPy style indexing instead of pointer arithmetic. Uh, block specs for simpler indexing, and transformation support like JIT and VMAP. Uh, we're hoping in the long run that this is a nice front end for JAX users and enables them to write custom kernels uh, pretty easily. Uh, some future work that we've been focusing on. Uh, the first is that Palace actually works on TPUs as well. We have a TPU backend for uh, Palace in that rather than loading to Triton, we load to something we call Mosaic, which is essentially Triton for TPUs. Um, it's a very similar representation. It's a it's a really an indication that Triton really hit that representation sweet spot. Um, other things on our roadmap for Palace on GPU are block pointer support, um, and finally, uh, a kind of completing the integration with JAX is exploring how kernels interact with the rest of the uh, JAX transformation machinery. We are experimenting with distributing these kernels over many machines and how kernels interact with the rematerialization system that JAX has in place. Um, thank you for listening to the talk. Um, and uh, sorry I couldn't make it, but uh, hope you enjoyed. Thank you.